Welcome to the La Casa de Cristo Sermon Cast. This sermon is titled, Believe It or Not, by Pastor Jeff Ruby, dated November 3rd, 2024. When I was growing up, I was fascinated by one specific cartoon. And that cartoon was Ripley's Believe It or Not. In that cartoon, Robert Ripley would always portray some astounding human achievement, usually in the world of sports, but in other avenues as well. And you were challenged to believe this outstanding thing that just defied all human odds, believe it or not. Robert Ripley parlayed that cartoon into a multi-million dollar entertainment enterprise that exists to this day. Ripley Enterprises is based in Orlando, Florida, and it has over 12 million guests a year at its various entertainment and amusement park venues. But what I remember most was the challenge to believe something that did not seem possible. Believe it or not. And this is what John presents to us in the gospel this morning. Lazarus has been moldering in his grave, and there is a stench for several days. And when Jesus comes, the sisters accost him, Martha and Mary, and said, Lord, if you had been there, this would not have happened. Our brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. And then, based on the Jewish belief that there will be a resurrection on the final day of judgment, they talk about that a little bit. And then Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will live and will never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Believe it or not? It was the Apostle Paul who wrote in 1 Corinthians, that if we do not believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then our faith is in vain and our preaching is useless. The resurrection is the foundation, and we shouldn't just celebrate it on Easter Sunday, but we should celebrate it every day of our existence. Because it is that power that God gives to us, not just at the end of our days, not just when we too join the saints in heaven, the church triumphant, but for us here, the church militant, who are called to express the light and love of Jesus Christ in the here and now. It is that gift of the resurrection that God gives to us. And how does he give it that? Well, the, the resurrection accounts of Jesus, uh, as he goes around before he ascends back to heaven, he breathes on his followers the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that is the claim you and I need to have today. That whatever we come here with this morning, whatever our challenges, that we believe in that power of the Holy Spirit, that we claim that resurrection power. So the question I'm asking you and me today is this, do we believe this? Do we believe in the power of the resurrection in the here and in the now? Not just for when we die, that's wonderful enough that we'll be given a new body, that we'll be given the garments of righteousness, bodies that are freed from pain and suffering. That's wonderful enough, but do we believe in that right here? And do we believe in it right now? You know, there's a humorous story told of a little boy, Bobby and his parents, that were leaving church and driving home. And little Bobby kind of uh, astounded his parents by all of a sudden blurting out, that he wanted to be a pastor, that he wanted to be a preacher. So they, they asked little Bobby, well, why do you want to do that? And they were kind of expecting an answer like, well, because I love Jesus, because I want to help people, so forth and so on. But little Bobby had a very practical reason. He said, well, I look at it this way. He said, if I have to be in church every Sunday anyway, I'd rather be the guy who gets to stand up, walk around and talk loudly than having to sit down, be still and listen in the seats. Little Bobby was very practical. But you see, he understood the energy. The energy that we have. What's going on in your life? 
right now, this morning, on Sunday, November 3rd, are you depressed? Are you addicted to something? Are you suffering from low self-esteem? Are you inordinately worried and fearful for a family member, a parent, a child, a grandchild, a sibling? Are you coming here this morning and your marriage is broken? Or maybe there are challenges in another relationship that you have. Are you fearful, fearful financially? Are you worried about your health? You see, all of these things, what we do is we don't claim this resurrection power. We believe it's within our own power to solve these things. And the reality is the gift that God gives us, not only on this Sunday, not only on Easter Sunday, but every day, every hour, every minute of every week is the gift of the Holy Spirit that we can claim that resurrection power. And when we do that, then we can rest assured in Him. You see, Martha and Mary, they were, they were trusting in their own power. They believed that somehow if Jesus had just been there, none of this would have happened. And when things go bad for us, when we encounter death, destruction, pain, grief, whatever it may be, we, we tend to do the same thing that they did. We trust in ourselves and not in God. So, my encouragement to you this morning is this, whatever you're going through in your life, wherever you're suffering, wherever there's pain, wherever there's grief, wherever there's heartache, turn to that gift, that power of the Holy Spirit. And that question that is asked, do you believe this? We have to answer it. We have to say we believe it or not. And, and, you know, for those of us who are mourning loved ones this morning, whether it's the saints from this past year or long ago our saint went to heaven, the same is true. I like to say that tears are holy water. They remind us of God's holiness, the love we have for our loved ones, the grief that we share, and grief is part of that process. But there are all sorts of tears that we have in life, all sorts of challenges that we have, all sorts of little mini griefs that we have as well, and we must claim that resurrection power. Not just for our own personal lives, but we also have to understand that in terms of the life of what is going on all around our nation and our world. On Tuesday, if the person you do not support, if the person you did not vote for, if the person you will not vote for gets elected as president-elect, do you believe that God will abandon us then? Do you believe that on Tuesday night, that if the person you supported does not get elected, that God will forsake his people, that he will leave us alone? Or do you understand, as several hundred of you did as we went through the Daniel study the past few weeks, that this powerful people in the world, Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, King Cyrus, Antiochus Epiphanes, all of them, they are for God the blink of an eye. God will not resign his office on Tuesday night. And the reality is, no matter who our president-elect is, I would hope we all say, Jesus Christ is still our King. As we come to this time and place, we have many fears and many worries about many things. The future of our own personal challenges in our life and the life of our families, the future of the world and our nation. But God gives us the answer. And the answer is to claim the power of the Holy Spirit. That as Jesus breathed that resurrection power upon those first followers, then they were equipped to go out and be the light in the world. They were equipped. They had to answer the question, believe it or not. And sometimes we'll go back and forth. Even after the resurrection, the disciples were hiding behind locked doors. And in the same way, our fears sometimes get the best of us. But we can claim that power not just for when we die, but right here and right now. Thomas, who was given the nickname Doubting Thomas, 
probably not very accurately, as he was the only disciple who said to Jesus, Jesus, let's go up to Jerusalem and we will die there with you. Thomas was a man of great courage. And he went after the ascension to what is today modern day India to proclaim the good news. And a legend in the early church has it that a king in India named King Gundaforis came to Thomas, he came to him, and he said, build me a palace. And he gave him great amounts of money to build the palace. And Thomas said, I will build you a palace. And months went by, and the king saw no land being cleared. He saw no construction. He saw nothing going on. He went back to Thomas and he said, where is the evidence of the palace? Where is this? What is going on? And Thomas said, your palace is being built. And over the next weeks and months, what Thomas had done was taken the money the king had given him. And he used it to clothe those who needed clothes and feed those who were hungry and reach out to the last and the least and the lost. When the king finally came back to him angry because his palace wasn't being built, he said, where is my palace? I want to see it. He said, you will see it. Thomas told him, you will see your palace the day you die when you enter the gates of heaven. Jesus Christ has no earthly hands and feet except yours and mine. That's why we've reached out to Lutheran Disaster Response in excess of $30,000. That's why we do our Angel Tree Ministry. That's why we continue to reach out to Scottsdale, Phoenix, Arizona, the nation and the world. To love those that don't know Jesus Christ and grow those who do. Our mission statement. But you need to answer the question this morning, as do I. A question we need to ask ourselves repeatedly. Do you believe in the power of the resurrection? Do you believe in it, not just for when we die? Do you believe in it in the here and the now? Will you believe it today, tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, next Saturday, and next Sunday as we gather for worship? Do you believe this? And may we, with Martha, Answer that, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Believe it or not. Amen.